<laughs> All right. Good evening. Good evening. All right. We should have had uh, Vivian keep preaching. She made a couple of errors there. Number one, when you bring all the people here, what she meant to say was you bring in the Kelly. She's right in that room there. In that room over there. That room there. All right, welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center. Is the uh, van from Flagstaff here? Raise your hands if you're here yet. You guys down here yet? No? Okay. There's a van of people supposedly coming for a prayer tonight, so we're looking forward to that. All right, thank you for uh, for uh, coming out tonight. Tonight is uh, the weirdest uh, seminar of the year. It's on uh, familiar spirits. It's going to be an interesting night, and uh, I guess we need to get going. Our next uh, seminar is uh, probably the most interesting of them all, the, uh, the Mysteries of Divine Healing. Why uh, divine healing seems to work in this case, but it doesn't work in that one. I'll explain all that to you next month, okay? I won't be here next Friday. Uh, Rick will be here uh, teaching for me. My uh, daughter, Tracy, she's watching on the live stream right now. She's moving here from uh, Tucson. I've been uh, praying for 10 years for her to come up to be here. And uh, she's moving here. She belongs up here with uh, the ministry. She belongs with her dad. So. All right, uh, I'm on the radio every morning and afternoon, as you know, on these two radio stations. And I'm also out in the West Valley on the FM station in the morning and in the middle of the night. I'm always on the radio on soundcloud.com slash hardcore-christianity. You can always get the radio programs there if you, if you like. Tonight's teaching will be on our YouTube channel. We have four of them. The first one, Deliverance Training Channel, is for people who want to enter the healing and deliverance ministry. You just go through the, each uh, session, and uh, you'll be ready to go. The second one is where our teaching is tonight on YouTube, House of Healing AZ. Our Thursday night teachings at 7 o'clock here are also uh, on the internet on live stream. Right there. Uh, if somebody needs to be delivered and they're too uh, scared to come or they can't get here or whatever, if you send me an email at mike at hardcorechristianity.com, I will send you uh, a uh, list to go through for deliverance. Step one, two, three, four, you just go right down the list. And uh, one's for mentally ill Christians and the other's for uh, troubled Christians. YouTubers, please remember you're to open up a terror cell in your church and start picking off the, uh, the sick people there. Okay? And there's their scripture, and you look at the Deliverance Training Channel and show you just exactly how to do it. Thank you for your donations. As Vivian says, those are boxes or <laughs> crates, donation bins <laughs> on the doors. Thank you. You can also donate on the website on the PayPal button. Thank you, and I'll see you in Oceanside. For a deliverance uh, seminar, I'm on Saturday, the November 18th at 10 o'clock. I will not be on the 7 o'clock one. That schedule's changed. Okay. Okay. Uh, familiar spirits, the rulers of the planet Earth. Iraq's on fire, Afghanistan, the whole world's going to hell in a handbasket. And there is method to the devil's madness. There's method to it. He knows exactly what he's doing. The whole thing's being processed out. But the main spirits that are going to be doing this are the familiar spirits. We're going to be going over them tonight. And you're all very familiar with them because they are all part of your lives as well. Familiar spirits are the religious demons. And all the killing in Iraq and Afghanistan is related to religion. Religion's the uh, single worst plague that ever hit humanity. It's the worst thing we've ever seen. It's the worst thing we'll ever know. It's horrible. It ends up killing people. All right, let's take a quick look at the spirit world and see where we're at tonight. These six scriptures at the top, uh, I combined them and made this pyramid for you. And uh, it shows you the hierarchy of the kingdom of darkness. And tonight's uh, lesson is... Number three, Cosmocrator demons, they are the uh, familiar spirits currently in charge of the planet. 
The ones at the bottom, you see there, daimonion is the Greek word for devils or demons in the King James Bible. Those are your run-of-the-mill demons that we all have to face day in and day out. They're at the bottom of the pyramid, and as you go up the pyramid, you increase in power and authority. The top two spots are probably, my guess, the fallen angels. All right? If you uh, want to understand familiar spirits, there's a great scripture, uh, chapter 18 in Deuteronomy. You have to be familiar with this. It actually breaks down the type of spirits that you're going to be facing, and we're facing them the, the same demons today. They just have different names. But uh, here's the list of uh, witchcraft-type demons, divination, time observers, enchanters, witches. They all have different uh, Hebrew words. Here's the rest of the list. Uh, charmers, consulters, wizards, necromancers. What's a necromancer? That's a popular one. We have the, yeah, yeah, talk, talking to dead people. Talking to uh, grandpa, grandma, uncle, uncle Bob to kick the bucket. Stuff like that. Uh, consulter of familiar spirits. Those are people who have these demons that get information out of the spirit world. We call them different things now. Mediums, channelers. Uh, what else we call them? Um, there's a couple others. Leviticus 19 says, you shall not eat anything with blood. By the way, that's even becoming popular. Vampirism is picking up now. Uh, neither use enchantments or observe times. You shall neither round the corners of your heads or your beards. And you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Or print any marks on you. Uh, a natan is a tattoo. Leviticus 20, a man or a woman that has a familiar spirit, what did they do with them then? Yeah, it was a capital offense to have familiar spirits. And the problem there is, in the Old Testament, they didn't have deliverance. It was before uh, the blood of Jesus. So if you had demons in the Old Testament, there wasn't any way to get rid of them. So if you picked up familiar spirits, they just got rid of you. Now, grace and mercy applies, and if you have spirits, tonight you're going to be set free. If this was the Old Testament, I wouldn't have the Arizona Deliverance Center. I'd have a rock quarry. <laughs> We'd be taking people over to the healing house next door, Nolan Ryan them, and that'd be it. We don't do that anymore. All right, what's the purpose of familiar spirits? Well, there's method of the devil's madness. Somebody is about to come on our world stage that is going to blow people's minds. He's right in Revelation 13. What's so strange about him is he's not mentioned anywhere in the Bible. The Antichrist is mentioned several times in the Bible. Ezekiel, Daniel, other places. But this person is not mentioned at all until he sprung on us in the book of Revelation. And he is the leader of the world of the occult. And it's this person here, the false prophet, in Revelation 13. John said, I saw another beast coming out of the earth with two horns like a lamb. Alos is the Greek word there, and it means another of a similar kind and quality, something very similar to the other one. The other one is the Antichrist. So the false prophet follows him, it says, and he spoke like a dragon, but he was like a lamb, which is, which is a, almost like a TV preacher. They come on you like lambs, and then they have this dramatic presentation like a dragon, but they're really looking for something else later. He exercises all the exousia authority of the first beast. The false prophet has all the authority of the Antichrist. And he causes the earth and all those that dwell on it to worship the Antichrist whose deadly wound was healed. What's that mean? I'm not sure. 
uh, the Greek word is plege, and it means uh, to be injured from a stroke. So if I had a sword or a hammer or something and whacked you on the head, that would be a plege, so to speak. Or if I hit you or stabbed you with something, that would be the Greek word you would use. So it sounds like he got injured somehow. Then it says, he does great wonders. He makes fire come down from heaven in the sight of men. Now, the only way the false prophet's going to be received and welcomed in our society all over the planet is if you're already preconditioned to familiar spirits. What the devil's doing now is taking America through a, a series of what psychologists call systematic desensitization. The spirit world is now growing here, and spiritual things are now growing and accelerating. And what he's doing there, the occult has to be huge for, before he comes on the scene. Because when the false prophet comes on the scene, he'll be readily accepted by everybody. He comes in like a lamb, and he is as powerful as a dragon. And he uses these incredible satanic miracles, and the devil's capable of performing miracles, to convince everybody of his legitimacy. He deceives them by those miracles that he has power to do. Didami means to be given or surrendered. What it's saying there is that Satan handed over his power to the false prophet. He'll be the greatest mystic, the greatest practitioner of the occult in the history of the world. And it says he does it in the sight, the Enopian, or the presence, or in the same area as the beast, the Antichrist. That's what it's saying. And he says to them on the earth, make an image to the beast. That's a Greek word, icon. It means a statue, similar to... Catholics. If you walk in there, there's a statue. Uh, there's Mother. Might be Mother Mary praying there, and then Mike, Michael, the archangel in the corner. Something like that. Same kind of thing. That's the same Greek word. He whips up some kind of a statue of the Antichrist. It says, which was uh, wounded by the sword, and uh, he lived. Now, that was an interesting Greek word. Makaira is a knife. The Greek word for sword, ramphia, was not used in that verse. So it sounds to me like, I can't prove this, but it sounds to me like it was an assassination attempt. Like Hitler. Yeah. As soon as the Nazis, the Germans, saw they were going to lose the war, and they saw that he was going to wipe out the country, they tried to kill him. In fact, there was a movie made out of that. Tom Cruise was in it. What was the name of the movie? What? Valkyrie, thank you. Valkyrie was a movie made. Tom Cruise was in it, and they were showing one of the uh, uh, assassination attempts. There was like a dozen or so of them. But anyway, my guess is somebody takes a shot at this guy, stabs him somewhere, and he gets healed, healed later. I'm guessing. I don't exactly know. That's what it looks like. Revelation 13, he had power to give life to the image, the icon, the statue of the Antichrist, and it starts to speak, and he caused everyone to, who would not worship the beast to do what? Yeah, it's Hitler all over again. Instead of Auschwitz, they're going to have some other system set up so that if you don't worship the beast and take the mark of the beast, there's some kind of an extermination plan set up to get rid of you. He causes all small and great, rich and poor, bond or free, to receive the mark in their right hand or their foreheads. Karakma is a cutting into the skin. It's not something that you would write on your skin. It's cut etched in is what it means. So it's some kind of an identification thing that's not removable. It becomes part of you. Exactly what it is, I don't know, but it, from that Greek word, 
It's not something that you would wear like a watch or a band. It would be something cut into your skin. It's what it's I think that's what it's trying to say. And then, no one can buy or sell unless he has this etching and is the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay. So this text was written in Greek by a Jew, Messianic Jew. What number that is, we don't know because the numbers in the Hebrew alphabet are different than the numbers in the Greek alphabet. So, <laughs> uh, I read an article that <clears throat> somebody said Barack Obama is the Antichrist. Well, there's no way to know that because the numbers in English for the letters in the alphabet are different than the numbers in Greek and the number in Hebrew. Number one, number two, uh, I thought it was Hillary Clinton. But anyway, um, uh, two, uh, but I, I, I changed that later because I, you know, I had one of those solar calculators and the thing went out. So I lost the number and i too tired to add it up again. But we don't know which language he's talking about here. Secondly, if you do figure it out, that means you're alive when he's here. Because you've got to have his name to figure out if it matches the numbers, and you've got to figure out if it's Hebrew or Greek. Or, I'll throw another one at you, Jesus spoke Aramaic as well. What's the bottom line here? Let's turn our lives over to the Lord, get healed and delivered, and get the he heck out of here before this psycho shows up. Let's take a vote. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, Christians can have familiar spirits and the Holy Spirit. Okay? The old wives' tale that Christians can't have demons is promulgated by Satan. That's, that's ridiculous. Okay, and here's how it works. So Let's look and see exactly how it works. A person is made up of five parts, as you know. Nous is your mind. Numa is your spirit. Suke is your soul. There. Sinaitis is your conscience. Your conscience covers your inner man. Sama is what? It's a medication. <laughs> they named a medication after the Greek word for your body, right? What's, what's a soma for? Is that an anti-inflammatory? Muscle relaxer. It's a muscle relaxer. And uh, at the altar call tonight, you're going to wish we had a bucket of those. <laughs> but here we go. Your inner man is made up of four parts, and that includes what? Inner man. Right. Your conscience. That's your inner man. Correct? Now, when you become a born-again Christian, only one of those things is born again, and which is that? Spirit man. Correct. Correct. Your spirit man is the only thing about you that's saved. The rest of it gets saved at the time of the rapture. Your soul is where your emotions come out of, and that's where your wounds are. Okay, so you can have a born-again Christian in spirit who has emotional problems. Correct? And you can have born again Christian in spirit who has mental problems. Correct? Don't raise your hands, but you know a few Christians <laughs> who have mental problems. Is, is that correct? Just nod. Don't raise your Don't point. <laughs> point anybody. Your conscience is not born again. Some people's consciences, like their mind and their soul, must be restored from years of sinning. 
years of bad habits, physical addictions. Okay? Translation. When you get born again, you are not a perfect person. God. What do you say? Blasphemy. No. Come on. Knock it off. Okay, you got problems. Don't raise your hand. And everybody knows you have them. We all have problems. Okay? Everybody needs stuff that needs to be worked on. But in your spirit, man, no one needs to be worked on here. Everybody is perfect in the eyes of God. If you are born again believer, correct? Born again, the Greek phrase is ganeo anathan. It means to be generated or born from above. See? So when you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and he lands in the spirit man. And your spirit man is sinless. Is anybody here not born again? Uh, this whole room here is full of sinless people. I'm not joking. Now, you're, you may have emotional problems with your soul, mental problems with your mind, and physical problems with an illness or sickness, etc. But that has nothing to do with your standing with Christ. This thing broke? So that when God looks at you, he sees what? He sees himself here, Numa, in, his, in your spirit, man. Don't you see that? It's like a mirror. When he looks in there, it kind of mirrors back to him. He sees a beautiful person in there. Now, what about the rest of the stuff? That is uh, all renewed over time as you grow in grace and study yourself to be approved unto God. Your soul and your mind and your body, it gets healed. Everything improves as you go through your Christian walk. But your spirit of man doesn't improve. It's always perfect. So the next time your, your childhood rejection demon tells you God's got a problem with you, instead of receiving that lie, start laughing. Because demons lie all the time, so if they said that, it must be the opposite. Okay. That's what you can do if you had a master's degree. Uh, <clears throat> now, why did I say all that? Back to the study. When someone has demons, they're not in the spirit, man. Because Christians can't be possessed by demons. That's impossible. But they can be infected. You could have a demon of an fear of infirmity in your body causing a sickness. You could have a spirit in your brain causing a mental illness. You could have a spirit in your body attacking your soul causing an emotional illness. You could have a spirit in your body causing an addiction. That doesn't mean you're possessed. Did a radio show next week on the Archbishop of Canterbury. He's got demons and has all kinds of problems with clinical depression. He's the Pope of the Orthodox Church. Okay? So, because people don't know what I just shared with you, and because Bible scholars don't know what I just shared with you, no one understands how this process works, okay? For example, uh, if you are a prophet and you are repetitively sinning in another area, people quickly determine that you're a false prophet. And it may not be true. The person may have all kinds of spiritual gifts in the spirit, man, 
but have spirits in your body or your brain causing other symptomatology. So when you see someone sin, you say, oh, that person's not a, not a Christian. That's not true. What's the beauty of this teaching? Well, A, it's true, and B, it allows you to be more patient with people. <laughs> it removes judgmentalism from the system. See? I was a counselor at Teen Challenge for two years, and those guys are jacked up. But they're, they were born-again Christians. See? So I was doing deliverance on them on the side. The director of the program knew what I was doing, but we just kept it on the kind of the hush-hush. And the spirits in these addicts doesn't mean they're not saved and they're not Christians. They have spirits in their bodies causing addictions. And just because a born-again Christian is, a, is sick with a cancer or a terminal illness has got nothing to do with spirit man. That's only the sickness in the body. That doesn't mean they're not saved. I should have got an amen uh, from somebody on that, but got a little legal, bunch of legal people here tonight. <clears throat> this familiar spirits, now to the point of that, are demons that get into your brain and they put Holy Spirit type things into your mind. Prophecies, words, visions, dreams, anointings in your mind from your brain. The Holy Spirit does it from your spirit man. Comes out of your spirit man. If somebody's a prophet, and they're, they're few and far between, everybody calls himself a prophet, they're not. But let's say you actually found a prophet. I haven't seen one in years. Well, let's say I found one yesterday. Their, their words, thus saith the Lord, come out of the spirit man to the mind and come out the mouth. If the person has a familiar spirit and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit and the spirit man, familiar spirit in the brain, the person can give good and bad prophecies which you see all the time, people giving a good word, and then the next one they give is off. Happens all the time. It happens at church all the time. The Lord told me that you blah, blah, blah. Now, that could be true or it could be false because you don't know if that person's speaking with the Holy Spirit from the Spirit man or they're They've got a fake Holy Spirit, a familiar spirit, in their, in their brain giving me a false unction. So people get hurt a lot from people at church who keep giving words. See? And sometimes the words are completely wrong. Sometimes they're partially right. Sometimes they're hurtful. Sometimes they don't apply at all. It depends on the circumstance and the situation. But the point is, I'm trying to make, what causes that? It's the person themselves, they don't recognize the difference between the Holy Spirit word and the familiar spirit word because the oh, familiar spirits are impersonators. That's their main job, to impersonate the Holy Ghost and impersonate his gifts. They're fakers. Why do you know the difference? We'll get to that in a minute, but I'm right now just going through the origins of how this work works. Okay. So when you see a guy on TV give a prophecy, that person could be a wonderful Christian. Okay, it doesn't mean they're a false prophet. Okay. A lot of good people have been on TV, but they have given false prophecies. Pat Robertson. Jack Van Empey. Predicted the end of the world in 2012. He's a good man of God, you know. 
I heard that prophecy and I go, Jack, oh, buddy, dude. Jack, I mean, buddy, I love you. Oh, well, you blew that one. Okay, they're getting misreads. Don't you see it? They're getting misreads, and the people around them don't know what I just taught you. They're ignorant of how the spirit world operates, so they are deceived. Well, you can't trust anybody. Correct. However, the Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is to be established. When someone gives you a prophecy, you're never to receive that until it's confirmed by the Spirit two or three more times. In our society, in the megachurch system, Lukewarm, carnal, useless, gutless Christians float around to anybody who can give them a word. Can you give me a word? My life's dying. They won't do it God's way. They want a shortcut and a light switch fix. So the devil says, I'd be happy to give you a word. I got plenty of familiar spirits in the megachurch. Here's a gal for you. Blah, 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 blah. And then boom, disaster hits. Because they were... A, too lazy to get the word themselves. B, didn't get two or three confirmations. You say, well, that person ought to be burned to the stake. No. You can be a good man or woman of God and have spirits, and it doesn't make you a rotten person. And it's important to remember that the person sharing this with you is to, is to be liked. <laughs> this isn't going over well. Let's skip this part of the section. Now, familiar spirits hide in this portion of the brain. See it there? Your frontal cortex. And this is the section of your brain you make decisions you made a decision using this part of your brain when you came here tonight. There's a part of your brain now telling you to run. Fight it off. <laughs> All right, now, there are false prophets out there. That's true, okay? There's false prophecies out there, okay? But they are not one in the same, so be careful with that. When someone gives a false prophecy, it doesn't necessarily mean they're a false prophet. I know that sounds crazy. Most people that give words are well-meaning good people, and what they're not really giving you a prophecy. They're giving you what I call a spiritual impression. They're having an impression when they're around you, and they kind of say it that way in a way. You know, the Lord kind of spoke to me, my heart, and said that this and that was that and this was about you. It's not really a prophecy. But in America, Christians have such low self esteem that they're desperately grasping to get a title. Everybody wants a title. And their biggest dream in life is to be an apostle. Well, if they suck at an apostle, then they drop down to prophet. <laughs> And they're trying to make themselves feel better, see? And their concept of Christianity is completely off. You're a born-again child of God. You're there. That's all the validation you ever need. You're a child of God. You don't need to stick a bunch of labels on your forehead. That's for the Antichrist. Let's go to false prophets now and check out some of their skills. Jeremiah 14, the Lord said to me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I did not send them. I did not recommend them. They prophesy false visions and divination and things of nothing. And what? Torma. 
frauds. What are, what are they really describing there? The familiar spirit in the false prophet's brain gives the person frauds. They're not, it's not from God. It's from a familiar spirit. Hiding in the person's brain. The person doesn't know it. That's the deception of it. They don't know there's something in there. They think it's God. And some of them are very sincere. It's not like they're trying to be frauds. They just don't know. It's deception. Deception is different than malice. Is that correct? Yes. Not on the demon's part, but on the human's part. They're, they have nothing but malice. But a human that is deceived is not necessarily a rotten person, nor do they necessarily have rotten motives. In fact, it's quite the opposite in my experience. In the years I've been counseling false prophets and people who have kundalini spirits and familiar spirits, I've noticed that the vast majority of them are good people. And it says in Ezekiel 13, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel. Say to them, they're prophesying out of their own hearts, which is a generic term for your inner man. That's not coming from the Holy Spirit is what Jehovah is saying right here. Hear the word of Yahweh or Jehovah, woe to foolish prophets who follow their own spirit. And have seen nothing. They've seen something, but not from Yahweh, is what he's saying. And it says, Matthew 24, Jesus said, this exact quote, These there'll be false messiahs and false prophets in our day. We're near the end. But and they are capable of what? Performing miracles. And they will deceive who? The Christians, eklektos is the Greek word for church. These are spirit-filled, born-again Christians who are being deceived because they don't know what I just taught you. They don't see how it... In studying Greek, they call uh, ver, uh, the work what? Parsing vowels. You have to parse verbs. You have to parse nouns. What I'm doing now is parsing spirits. I'm, uh, in a way, like a rapper. I'm breaking this thing down. <laughs> See? I got the great outfit, but don't have the moves. <laughs> Sp familiar spirits are the demons that perform miracles, but they do it on the QT. It's on the slide. They're faking you out. The same demons that are performing miracles in the church, in many cases, are the same ones doing voodoo in Uganda. Same spirits. Different miracles. Familiar spirits all have the same attitude toward people. They hate them. And they attack them at night, saved or not, uh, many of them can cause sleep paralysis. When you wake up in the middle of the night and you're frozen, you can't move and can't speak anything and can't say and you're petrified. Uh, they haunt houses. These are the familiar spirits that are in your home. Uh, usually a shadow figure in the corner, usually somebody walking across a room out of the corner of your eye. If you're on meth, you can see them real easy. <laughs> you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't breathe. You, something's on your chest, pushing it down. You feel like somebody's choking you. Uh, addicts have this all the time. People who have been in witchcraft, it happens all the time. They're very familiar with these, these uh, situations. Uh, they give you weird dreams. You're out of control dreams. Uh, you're falling. Somebody's chasing you. you. You can't fix something. You can't get out of a room, different kind of things like that. You're lost. You're walking around. Familiar spirits also cause sleepwalking. They're trying to get you to get up, get out of bed, and then hurt yourself. Fall off a table, fall off the street, walk in front of a car. 
SMIs, the seriously mentally ill, almost always have familiar spirits. And you can tell that because they're fascinated with religion. If they're Christians, they, they read the Bible all the time. It doesn't do them any good. They can quote stuff left and right out of the word. Life screwed completely up. Uh, they're, they're really interested in spiritual things, religious things. Oh, they're, they're big on the end time. Oh, the Antichrist, end of the world. That's huge. Those are all familiar spirits in addition to the other spirits hiding in their brain causing the mental illness. Religious demons are familiar spirits. All right, let's take a look at some modern day familiar spirits. I watch this guy all the time. You know who that guy is? What's his name again? Henry? What's his name? Matthew Henry? You never saw him? I watch him every week. I like to watch these uh, mediums because I like to see what, how the demons manipulate them, and then I like to see what information they give to the people and how they manipulate them. It's like I'm hiding in a closet spying on them. <laughs> these two here have extremely high anointings from familiar spirits, particularly that guy there. He comes up with incredible stuff from demons. You wouldn't believe it. It's easy to do, though, if you think about it. Uh, a relative who had spirits for 70 years and they die, those spirits know everything about that person. So after the person's dead, this guy comes in and says, uh, Grandpa told me that he's been watching over you. He, he was so happy with your ball game. You hit a home run. He was tickled. Well, these demons know all about Grandpa. So they've got intimate details about him, not even his family has. Because they were with him when he was alone. You're never alone. You're never alone. Reality TV is huge for uh, familiar spirits. These guys don't know what they're doing. They have no idea they're playing with fire. All these people eventually come down with terminal illnesses. They go into haunted houses and graveyards hunting for demons. Dude, get a real job. <laughs> these are popular she's dead now but the other two guys I think are still alive uh, they they are uh, necromancers they they talk to the dead and talk to dead relatives and different things like that TV is loaded with familiar spirits now there's all kinds of TV shows on with familiar spirits on there it's amazing if you're an old person like me you remember these two but if you're not, you won't recognize them. But anyway, they had familiar spirits. They were soothsayers. They could predict the future. Uh, this guy's dead. He used to have a false religion, Unification Church. That's familiar spirits. The Dalai Lama, familiar spirits. Yeah, this guy's dead, Jose Luis de Miranda. He popped up in Florida years ago. He said he was Jesus when he first started out and then switched it over to the Antichrist. Then after he got liver cancer, he kind of switched it over to the graveyard. Tr Michael Traveser uh, was the guy in New Mexico that had that satanic cult. He's in prison for child molestation. Tony Alamo's dead now. He had that Arkansas uh, satanic cult. He, he went to prison for child molestation. He's dead now. This guy's dead. Remember him? That was all familiar spirits. He was loaded with them. Religious demons. This guy came, popped up, what was that, 15 years ago or so? Hail Bop. Hail Bop. Every time Hail Bop comes around, the familiar spirits kick in, and then a new group cranks. Koresh, remember him? He had familiar spirits. He had, he's dead. Warren Jeffs, the Mormon guy, remember him? He's in prison for child molestation. F Farrakhan, that's all familiar spirit. Nation of Islam, 100%. If you're an old person like you, you remember him? Yeah, the Night Stalker in Los Angeles. He was, he had a pentagram on his hand there. Devil t would tell him to sneak into apartments at night and kill people. That's Charles Manson. He's got familiar spirits. He's still alive. Now, familiar spirits are the smartest of all demons. They created these religions, and that takes a beyond genius level IQ to do that. That's supernatural. There's so many gods in Buddhism, I, can't, I couldn't even remember the gods, let alone create the gods. Wicca 
is all familiar spirits. Hinduism has so many gods you can't even believe it. Can't even count them. Uh, Native American, terrible familiar spirits. Islam, and in my opinion, this is the lar most powerful familiar spirit in the world, this one. Mother Mary. That is not Jesus' mother. Jesus' mother was a wonderful person. <laughs> Her name was uh, Miriam. This is Mother Mary. That's a horse of a different color. <laughs> Chrislam is hitting us now. You ever heard of that? That's where you mix, you mix uh, Islam and Christianity and Judaism and Christianity and uh, Messianic Jews, the familiar spirits tell them, hey, these Gentile Christians need to be eating feasts and wearing certain things. and It's all familiar spirits making stuff up. Uh, they make books. They, they write books. These are all familiar spirits. They, they, they fix Bibles for you. Uh, Familiar spirits know the Bible backwards and forwards in every language. They're experts on the Bible, way beyond any Bible scholar. They're the best at it. They can write a new Bible. There's a new one there, Book of Mormon. And here's one. That's a regular Bible that was, they just took the words out they didn't want, replaced them with other. There's the Talmud. That's the Jews taking... God's word and then rearranging it and coming up with a familiar spirit book. There's the Quran, the world's biggest familiar spirit book. Familiar spirits love movies. There's six or seven Narnias out already. There's like five or six Harry Potters out. These are all familiar spirits, all witchcraft type demons. Eating our society alive. Okay? Let's stop there for a second. How'd that go? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I only saw two people leave, which is way below the normal quota. So <laughs> we're going to kill this tonight. Any questions in the uh, section over here, with the Jehovah Witness section? Anything over there? <laughs> All right. Over here, anybody? Mormon section? No, nope, nothing. One there. There's one. Yes, <laughs> What would I call a familiar spirit? They're called familiar spirits. Now, familiar spirits are a high-level order of demons that I had on that triangle. They're, they're very powerful, and they're very intelligent. And so the familiar spirit then becomes Allah. The familiar spirit then becomes you know, Zoroaster, or whatever religion they make up, then that's what they become. They morph themselves into whatever it is they're manufacturing. Narnia. Yeah. Uh, the familiar spirit is behind all these things I'm showing on the screen. They're the root of it, and they, they created it. The Bible, that's what the Bible calls them, familiar spirits. Yes, sir. Oh, is a, is it the demons of attraction? No, those are different spirits. Do you see the difference? Oh, they're very they're very different. They're, what? Oh, there. Yeah, absolutely. You you can spot them by their symptoms. Yeah, uh, for example, uh, spirits of infirmity, th those are almost always illness, sicknesses, disabilities, that kind of thing. But familiar spirits can also cause those things if you get involved in witchcraft, masonry, sorcery. Yeah. Well, there's no regular, there's no regular spirits. They're just different kinds of spirits. And then on that triangle I had, there, there are different levels of power and knowledge and authority, like humans. Okay? If you come into the, 
deliverance center here, you'd see Kelly at the top, and then I'd be down here. <laughs> then Vivian would be in the regional office, supervising. Yeah. So, what about when like, a, like a, can a house be haunted, or is it a person that has something inside of it? Well, can a house be haunted, or is it a person? Great question, both, okay? Uh, it depends on what happened in that house before you moved in. So let's say somebody got raped or murdered or child molesting or different things. Those spirits, once you start sinning in this area, they claim ownership of that area, okay? In addition, the person coming into the house, if they're infected with spirits, now you've got a twofer. It's a two-for-one. You've got spirits now interacting with the spirits in the facility, Right, so places that are high traffic areas for demons, mental hospitals, prisons, jails, drug centers, crack houses, there's a high concentration of spirits in that area. So if you come into the area, you could be affected by it. Yeah. yeah, there's a way to get, is there a way to get those out? He asked, yes there is. The way the Catholics and the Protestants do it is they go to the house and they tell the demons, get out of here and stop it. <laughs> then they anoint the doors, and that usually does not work. That, will, that usually will not work. I never do that. you got to get the spirits out of the person living there first. There's no point in going to a facility, throw a demon out, and then have the person there with demons drawing other things back in. What you're doing is you're, you're spinning your wheels there. So you, you start with the first person first, is the way I do it. Then the ones in the house are easy to get out. They'll just leave. They'll, they'll bolt. Shack, yeah, that's a familiar spirit movie. What the familiar spirits always try to do is elevate themselves to a divinic level and then decelerate God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. And if you look at that Shack movie, the Holy Ghost, I think, is a maid or something. Are you kidding? That's nuts. That's the stupid thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, on Tuesday night, I had a patient down. I had a mortuary came, the mortician came, they picked up the body, and I think he was trying to be entertaining to this family that was there. There was three people in the family. And he said, yeah, he said, we have a resident ghost. It's a young boy. And he sits on the piano. And we have this this lady of color that she she always guards the door. And then we have this other guy, and he said, all the night people always see him. What are they? Uh, those are, those are, yeah. Really? Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I've never heard, like, somebody outside of us talk like they're an adult. They're there. So are they on, are they invented? Well, sure. It's not stupid at all. In fact, it's common. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Like, yeah, I go. go yeah, I call somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're all over the place, and those paranormal shows. Oh, that, those paranormal shows I was showing you. <clears throat> those are all sinners doing that. There's no Christians running around looking for demons. <clears throat> Sinners see demons all the time. They come to me all the time. It's routine. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah. Yeah, she said, Does, doesn't there have to be a door open for these demons to haunt a house? Sure, yeah, the, uh, something bad happened in the place before you got there, or you did something bad there. No, you're Some, home. You're home. Somebody, 
same thing. Somebody did something bad at the workplace that you weren't aware of, and these demons got in that building and had a right to be there. Just like she said, they got to have they got to have an open door. What's that? Yeah, if you whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Yeah? So if you go home and you, you're doing witchcraft, Ouija boards, tarot cards in your house, you, you, you open the door and they just come in. It's their spiritual right to do that. Because yeah. you gave it to them. See? If you, if you go sleep with 50 women, hey, you open the door, you've got unclean spirits. You picked up lust demons. If you sow that, you reap it. King Saul went to the witch of Endor. He said, hey, I need to see a familiar spirit. He died. You open the door, you get it. Yeah. Yeah, they come in. We're surrounded by spirits all the time. But they're looking for an opening. And if you are renewing your mind and you've repented of your sins and you're walking your walk, Demons can't get in. If you don't give the devil an opening, he can't get in and kick your face in. If you're going to walk on the line and putter around with sin, hey, you're going to get your stuff and not kicked right out of you. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Grandpa shows up at night. Familiar spirit. Oh, they, they can perform miracles. Yeah. And you can see your grandma standing over there in the corner. Grandma, what are you doing? It happens all the time. No, there's no, she's right. You, you, if, you, if you're seeing old relatives, dude, call somebody or do something. That is not your uncle standing there. That, though, when you drop dead, the Bible says you're either, you go to heaven if you're born again. If you're not, you go right straight to hell, period. And you don't get out, ever. Yeah. Judgment day, you're getting your face completely kicked in for eternity. You come out of hell, you face judgment, Revelation 20, and then you are thrown back into another area of hell, the lake of fire. No, if you're in heaven, you face the judgment seat of Christ after the rapture, and then you go into eternity in glory. Grant, another great question. I was, we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, if you have demonic flags, uh, like waving a flag at a bull, if you've got Buddha dolls, Mother Mary statues, uh, religious jewelry, posters, uh, there's a million different things. That's risky. No, get, take it off. Take it off. Now, before deliverance uh, here, we always have you take off the jewelry because you don't know where the jewelry came from. In Native American jewelry, it's particularly dangerous because when it's made, there's blessings placed on that equipment. So uh, take that off. Cut. Anything that has to do with the devil, get rid of it. I don't mean you're Spouse. That's a different seminar. Yeah. Uh, uh, especially Altia, we have a lot of people that are
Yeah, he's talking about beans, uh, beads and uh, dream catchers. No, that, you'll catch hell with a dream catcher. Get rid of those things quick. Yeah. Well, your the power of the idol comes from the person. The person gives the power to the idol. So, uh, and secondly, if you know better, and you know that's demonic, and you have it, you're risk you're risking getting caught. You're going to get caught. Why would a born again Christian need a Buddha doll in their house? Oh yeah, I definitely get that. I just kind of like always trying to like. Why would? No, no, it's like, sir, it's like getting married. There's nothing wrong with her. Well, he's fine. No, you need to check it out. You need to check it out. Better check it out, son. No, I, you go in your house, they call it house cleaning or different, different terms. You know, what do you need a dream catcher for when you got the Holy Ghost? That doesn't make any sense. Don't risk it. Don't risk it. Don't risk it. You've got enough problems without risking all that. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, he's saying he's saying there's some hidden things in your home, and there, there's nothing wrong with checking everything out. You know, be sober and vigilant for your adversary. The devil walketh about. Headphones. I don't. I don't know. What's? Can't you get one without a skull on there? No, no, I wouldn't do. No, I would. No, I wouldn't get anything with dead skulls on them. That's not going to help me. Crystals. Mm -hmm. Everything comes from the ground, including us. That's got nothing to do with anything. Okay, it's it's what what the demons bless. It's what the person focuses on. Okay, everything comes from the ground. That says have nothing to do with it. I think pot comes from the ground. <laughs> if nothing's been done with it, then I, I would throw it out. What do you need it for? Crystals. Crystals are very dangerous. Yeah. Okay. All right. We better get going. No, but uh, all these questions have been good ones. And everybody seems interested in the subject, which is a positive. At least that's the way I'm looking at it. Actually, I'm hoping, here we go, fake holy spirits. Here it is. Here's, here's the real skill of familiar spirits and Christians. Paul ran into a terrible situation at Corinth. The devil, as he always does, comes in after you're there sowing the word. He comes in afterwards the parable of the sower Paul got hit with the parable of the sower in Corinth and he says to them I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through subtlety your minds mistranslated not in my thoughts your thoughts should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ now familiar spirits love Christianity and they love religion and here's the trail they leave. Complexity. The Holy Spirit simplifies Christianity. The TV preachers make it complex so you think you're missing out on something. So you'll order books and tapes. 
90% of the crap sold on TV is unnecessary. If you complicate Christianity, it doesn't work. If you keep it simple, people get healed and delivered quickly. It's the simplicity of the gospel that heals. Love, love is simple. Mercy is simple. Grace is simple. Repentance. You don't need a Bible scholar to figure that one out. Repent. Not familiar spirits. Hinduism, extreme complexity. Years to study. Buddhism, extremely complex. Numerous teachings that can't. So Paul said the simplicity of Christ is being removed and it's being complicated by familiar spirits. If someone comes preaching another Jesus, Allos, someone that some a Jesus that sounds similar to the real one, who we did not preach, or you receive another spirit that's heteros, it means something totally different. Familiar spirits are totally different than the Holy Spirit. Or if you receive another gospel, a different gospel. That's what you usually see on TV. You see a bastardized brand of Christianity on television designed to generate revenue. That's another gospel. The glorious gospel of Christ, simple, it works, and it's free. Paid for in full at Calvary. Thank you. I'll be wrapping next week here. <laughs> There's another gospel out there, folks, and it doesn't work, and it costs you money, and it's complicated. All right. Now, we know about these, don't we? Everybody has these memorized. Let's take a look at them again, just, just for a second. Word of? And you've got word of? Discerning of spirits. Stop right there. Now, the demons tricked us on this one. The familiar spirits teach Christian churches that you need to get the gift of discernment. There is no such gift. That's a gift for people that call themselves prophets and apostles. It's discernment of spirits is the gift, not discernment. See the difference? Many spouses like to discern each other. In fact, my, her, is her door shut? My wife discerns me frequently. And I hate to have to admit this in front of my YouTube friends, she catches some flaws. <laughs> that is not, she doesn't have a gift of discerning me. She has a gift of husbandry. <laughs> that's a different gift. And it's one that's not a lot of fun. <laughs> miracles, miracles, gifts of healing, men. Tongues, Greek words glossa, prophecy, faith, interpretation, glossa. Okay? We all know those, correct? Those are wonderful things. The devil is a counterfeiter. The familiar spirits always counterfeit God's word. They always do something that try and make it similar to the Holy Spirit. See, they track him, they watch him. They analyze him, and when they see him do something, they counterfeit it to fool the sheep. It's very easy to do. Check it out. Clairvoyance is what? Yeah, you can see images and scenes and so on. Now, that's, that's counterfeiting, uh, counterfeiting God's gift to people when he gives them a true dream or a true vision. See? See what they're doing? Clear audience is what? Yeah, you can hear into the spirit world. Okay. Uh, 
Clairsentience is what? Yeah, it's you, you, you get sensations. You can feel sensations in your body. Okay? Why is that important? Familiar spirits always cater to your body or your flesh, and they always give you good feelings. And then they tell you, if it's good, it's from God. That's not true. If something's good, that doesn't mean it's from God. You're gonna you're staying for prayer, aren't you, sir? <laughs> Please stay for prayer, sir. <laughs> Claire empathy, what's that? That's a supernatural ability to feel somebody else's emotions. Claire cognizance, what's that? Yeah, that's like kind of like the gift of knowledge. It's you, you getting information about that person from the spirit world. Claire Alliance is what? Smelling fragrances and uh, when they're not in the room. You suddenly smell different odors. Now my wife is smelled different orders in the house, but it wasn't fragrances. <laughs> and that's when I've been to Filiberto's. Now let's switch over here. Claire Augustians is what? The capacity to t tasting things supernaturally and, dis and being able to give spiritual analysis of what you're tasting. Yes, ma'am. It could be God or it could be a familiar spirit. Well, I'm sitting there listening to that, there's really no way because she doesn't know that person. What's next? Larry, you see, this is also called psychometry. If, uh, uh, let me have your headphones and and you start discussing where you know spiritual things about they they hold stuff in their hands uh, jewelry a picture something like that you seen that before and you get impressions from the person that owned it and different things right the whole Claire ambience is what tasting something and then doing the same thing actually tasting you take the thing and then you get spiritual readings on it, divine revelations on whatever it is. It's all, it's all supernatural. Yeah. Here's some other familiar spirit events. Feathers falling in your church from angels. Uh, orbs. Ever seen orb? Boy, get them out your house. This church here loves orbs. Those are all, they're all spirits. Uh, carpet gems. Oh, there's a there's a diamond. There's a gem. Oh boy, gold. Got gold in my hand. Gold. Put your hands in your pocket. You're gonna get robbed. Okay. Stupid. What do you need gold on your hands for when you got the Holy Ghost? You know. What are they doing there? Again, they're making your body feel good, they make your emotions feel good, they make you feel special, and then they deceive you. Psychic healing. Yeah. Well, each case is different. Who plants familiar spirits depends on 
who's ministering there, who's been there before, what kind of a ministry you've got, different things. Yeah, you got to kind of analyze it. Yeah. I don't know, but I wouldn't buy a, a, any demonic jewelry from anywhere. You know, a Buddha, Buddha necklace, uh, Mother Mary pins, uh, Jesus pictures, um, baby Jesus bumper stickers. I'm not interested. They're, they're touchy. Where'd they come from? What kind is it? Uh, I ask everybody that comes in for deliverance, where'd you get that cross at? If they say, I don't know. Uh, if they say my great grandmother gave it to my grandmother, I go, Well, what was your grandmother into? Oh, she was a bootlegger. Okay, take the cross off. <clears throat> if they bought it at Walmart, that's usually safe. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, nobody's putting spells on crosses at Walmart. <clears throat> but you never know, it's probably from China. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, gems and gold weights. Stupid. <laughs> no, they're real. Yeah, I know. No, that's real. No, that's that's familiar spirits. It uh, they're useless miracles. See, the Holy Ghost only gives productive miracles. Uh, if your neck got healed, that's a good thing. If you found a gem on your floor. Uh, in my seminar on Kundalini spirits, I show videos of gems and everything uh, for cults. The cults have gems. Uh, the Buddhist monks have m miracle gold dust. Okay. Th these fake things, they spread out in other... Listen that... Uh, Angel feathers are nothing. Native Americans will, will, they'll kill you on that one. Feathers. They got a bunch of feathers. Okay? So these uh, fake, useless miracles are not just for Christians. The, the familiar spirits have used these things all around the world. Okay? I show one video of a Muslim girl who has supernatural crystals coming out of her eyes. Click, they come out. Look, there's another one. Got a big handful of them. Listen, you don't need any gold dust or angel feathers or any other any any other kind of crap. You don't need any jewelry. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you have everything. Amen. Period. <laughs> now, there's also fake, again, they're copying the Holy Spirit. He gives legitimate healings. They have other healings, right? Uh, they also have astral travel. That's crept into the church. You leave your bed at night. You travel to India. You pray for somebody who's sick. Then you travel home, leap back in your body, get up at 7 o'clock, take a shower, and go to work. <laughs> what have you been doing tonight? I was in India praying. Dude, cut it. Deja vu. I, I've been here before. I don't, I've been here before. I mean, I'm just illustrating. You go to some place you've never been before, but you know you've been there before. Familiar spirits. Precognition. You're having dreams, and the dreams are coming true. Mom had a dream about grandma. She got sick and died two days later. Click. Dead. Now, you can track those demons fairly easy. I asked the person, when did your premonition dream start? They said, oh, I've had them since I was a kid. When did you get saved? I got saved when, when I was at college. Caught him. You didn't see how I caught him? She had them before she had the Holy Ghost, so I know that's carryover, and I know that's a demon. You can catch them like that. Sometimes you can't catch them like that, but that usually you can get them. Astral travel, oh boy, run from that. Uh, out of body experiences where you see a tunnel and a light at the end of the tunnel. Dude, come back in your body quickly. At the end of that tunnel, it drops off into the gates of hell. You write a letter to Santa, 
and you're triton on its own. Autonomic writing. Hey, whoa. Demons. Crystals run for the hills. Um, crystals actually started, I think, on the movie Wizard of Oz. There's one of them there. Levitation. Familiar spirits. Uh, light as a feather. The new one coming out is where the person sits in the chair. Have you seen those? Everybody lifts up this 400-pound person. So it's incredible. Numerology. Every, Brother Mike, everywhere I go, I see the numbers 23. I see 23 everywhere I go. Okay, renounce it 23 times and let's end that. <laughs> those are demons telling you, I'm tracking you. You're being watched. There's 23. Ouija boards, incredulously dangerous. You wouldn't believe how many people I've interviewed have been on a Ouija boards. They draw in spirits, familiar spirits like you wouldn't believe. They really do work. Poltergeist in the house, familiar spirits. Reincarnation, familiar spirits. Christian yoga, that's invading our society. Those are demons. Tarot cards, familiar spirits. Uh, no kidding, sir. <laughs> Can somebody put this guy on the ministry team? <laughs> Zodiac. Familiar spirits. That's uh, it's a, in, a, in essence, it's a giving a reading on an inanimate object. Basically is what that is. Spirit guides. No, those are all familiar spirits. If you know somebody who has spirit guides, eventually that spirit guide will get in them and then they're going to get sick and die. They always get in. Right? Healing oils are big in church now, really dangerous. They soothe the soul. They do these other different things. They've got kind of an Eastern flair to them. It's, usually it's on the bottle. Very dangerous to use healing oils. This is not healing oil. It's anointing oil. The oil can't heal you. We prayed over this. It's a symbol of the Holy Ghost who does the healings. The oil cannot heal you. This is not going to work. Amen. Prayer of faith heals you. Thank you. All right. There's some Christian familiar spirits out there. And here's a list of them. You, you know most of these. Uh, a lot of these are gone now. Uh, now, Way International, I don't know if that's still around anymore. Mormons. Armstrongs, uh, Ites, I think they're gone. Branhamites are still around. We used to have a couple that came. They used to sit right there in the front. And yeah, we used to have a couple coming. And uh, they disappeared. Unitarian, Unification Church, Reverend Moon. This is all familiar spirits. These are all familiar spirits. This one's particularly dangerous. If you have this in your family tree, masonry. That causes all kinds of spiritual problems. Uh, what else? Branch Davidians, I think they're all dead. Christadelphians, those were big in the 70s. I think they kind of fizzled. The family, I think that fizzled. And uh, hardcorechristianity.com here is a supposedly a cult, and I'm the cult leader. <laughs> I had several emails came in and said, hey, you know, you look like a cult leader. I said, if I'm a cult leader, I'm doing a poor job because my, I don't have very many followers. <laughs> and I don't have a harem. All cult leaders, oh boy, they're heavy duty trim. Huge, huge. Yes, sir. Uh, and that, that's not happening for me. <laughs> And, of course, I don't have a limousine. I don't live in a mansion. I, I got graded one time for being a cult leader, and I got an F. <laughs> then, I ended up, then I ended up on YouTube 
Uh, there's some UPC, that's a Pentecostal outfit. They've got all kinds of weird teachings and doctrines. Real smooth. Scientology is huge. That's completely familiar spirits. Uh, what else? Okay. Kundalini spirits. These are the ones that are overrunning our country. They came down from Toronto, Canada via India. I have a whole seminar on that, so I'm not going to lay, I'm not going to go into that too much, but the way kundalini spirits are transferred at church is that the infected person is touching another person and praying or downloading or imparting something into them and that transfers in. And they have what they call uh, fire tunnels or prayer tunnels where you go in this end, then you go out that end, and when you come out, you got a familiar spirit. Yeah, those things are very dangerous. Never let anybody put their hands on you that you don't know. What'd you say? You'll pick up. Yeah, yeah, sir. You're, you're staying tonight, right? <laughs> All right, this guy is helping the seminar. He went through a fire tunnel, picked up a demon. I just got it out of my mouth. Don't do that. You're playing with fire. All right, now good people have familiar spirits. Who's that guy? Paul Kane, he was a great faith healer back in the back in the 50s and 40s. He had a wonderful gift of healing. He was a great guy. What happened to him? Homosexual, familiar spirits, false prophecies. Yeah. What's your question? Uh, that's a tough call to make. I would recommend you not do that. What he's talking about there, there's an SMI, a mentally ill person who's homeless. And that's very common here in Maricopa County. We have thousands of them roaming the streets. And they also have familiar spirits where they focus only on religion. And if they're Christians, it's all phony Christian stuff. And they're, like that guy just said, they're real big on doomsday. The demons always tell these mentally ill people about doomsday because they're trying to generate fear in the person. And their whole life is a chronic, chronically revolving around fear. And that's why they're always telling them, the Antichrist is coming, Christ is coming, it's the return of Christ, oh, it's the end of the world. They're generating chronic fear so that the mentally ill demons can keep the person in bondage. And I'd, I'd recommend you not touch them. I don't touch them. I roll the window down. Here's the money and here's the Bible track. I always give them a Bible track. I never give them just money because they're going to go buy booze with it. I already know that. But I thought if I could just get a track in maybe 2 o'clock in the morning or something, he pulls it out of his pocket. Maybe just, you know, I was just hoping. Mark 5. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah, he was an SMI. Seriously mentally ill. Mark chapter 5. Right. Here's Todd Bentley, the king of the Kundalinis. That poor guy. When he was a sinner, he was a severe heroin addict. And when he went through deliverance, he never got all the demons out. And then he went into the ministry, and it was absolutely awful. He was the guy that did the Lakeland revival. Right in the middle of the revival, he ran off with his girlfriend, left his wife and kids in the middle of the revival. They, you could tell he wasn't a TV preacher because they would wait to the end of the revival. <laughs> now, what's a, you know,
Oh, she's asking about tattoos, and I don't get too involved in that, but if you have skulls or demonic stuff tattooed onto you, it's very similar to waving a flag in the spirit world. What you're saying is, it's almost like a brand to a, a cow. Uh, you're on this, whatever ranch you're on, psst, that's the brand for that ranch. And so, but if you got a tattoo or something uh, that means nothing, you know, I, I don't spend much time on that. But if you got Mother Mary over here, and you got a warlord over here, you got a cold-blooded killer there, dude, you've got problems. <laughs> Okay, John said it's a blood covenant, so he recommend zero tattoos. Yeah, that's the way he sees it, or at least it, I, I'm interpreting it that way. Okay. Uh, here's another person, Jim Baker. He was a good guy. The familiar spirits just took him down a horrible road. He's back on TV selling survival kits for the end of the world now. It, it's a mess. Bill Branham, this guy had the greatest gift of healing you've ever seen. He got infected with familiar spirits. Thought he was one of the two witnesses. Died in a car accident. Embarrassing. Pat Robertson, he gives a good prophecy, then he gives a bad one. Every year he gives two or three. Really embarrassing. Terrible. Kim Clement, really good guy. He just he just recently died of a brain tumor. He give he give a good prophecy, then he give a bad one, then he give a good one. You know, really good guy. Familiar spirits. Remember, they don't know they have them. That's the problem, and nobody around them can recognize it. Nobody around them can recognize it. So they can't give anybody any help. They can't give anybody any help because they don't recognize it themselves. Here you go. You are, here's you after you got a word at church from a guy who called himself an apostle. You can't believe it. What is our responsibility regarding these spirits? Click. Number one, you never accept prophetic words from people without getting two or three confirmations. Okay? So if I tell you, the Lord told me you are to go to Uganda and marry a pastor named Ushaba. You are not to go get a ticket to Uganda. You are not to do that. Even if you respect me. No, you respect God's word above the person. You say, well, that. thank you, Brother Mike. I'll take that under advisement and I'll seek the Lord for two or three Uganda trip confirmations. Okay? That's how you do it. Even if you believe in that person, even if you know that person, or you think you know them, God's word comes first, the person comes second. All right? And, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but, Dakimazo, test them. Test out the spirits to see whether they're God, from God, okay? Now, if you just keep these seven things in mind, you'll probably never get caught. YouTubers, write these down when you watch it later. You've got to compare the person and their giftings and what they're preaching and teaching, what they're saying. You have to cross-check it. You can do it seven, seven different ways, and you're probably not going to get in trouble. Right? People who are uh, living for the Lord, don't have a bunch of bondages, can come to time just simply sense when somebody says something to you. 
you can kind of sense it. Wait a minute, I'm, that's not landing right. You know, you kind of have a kind of a sense like, mm, I don't know, thank you, but kind of thing. That's your conscience. See? And that conscience flared up when you met your spouse. Remember that? <laughs> that thing flared up. There was something like, wait a minute, hold off on that. And then there were other emotions from the soul that overrode it. Guess what happened? Yeah. You, you got married. Guess what happened next? <laughs> you calling me. I'd call Brother Mike. What's the ministry line here? I got to get my spouse in there to see him. <laughs> that was my joke. That wasn't for you. <laughs> These seven things will save your life. They really will. All right, all these things familiar spirits do in the world of religion, different religions, different gods in the ancient world, they are actually what? What are these things really? First Corinthians chapter 10, let's get ready to close. The things the nations sacrifice to, they sacrifice to daimonian demons, not to God. I would not that you should have any koinonia partnership relationship with daimonian. This applies to any kind of spirit other not just a familiar spirit. You are not to go out and use your body to commit adultery. You are you are fornicating. You are having koinonia with unclean spirits of lust. You are not to sit around looking at pornography. You are having koinonia with lust spirits are getting into your body while you're watching the porn you use it to masturbate the spirits enter and you are not supposed to be doing that you're not supposed to be walking into a buddha shrine or some temple looking around you don't belong in there you're god's child not a child of the devil that's for ignorant tourists to go in there and buy trinkets and th not you. You cannot drink out of the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You will get infected. You're not possessed, remember. Christians can't be possessed, but you will become infected and you will get sick. Emotionally, mentally, physically, whatever, however. You cannot, Mateco, be a participant of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Here's how we do it here. Somebody comes to see me for problem A. And they repent of problem A. And God has mercy on them. It's amazing. It's amazing, the grace of God. It's incredible. I am awed by it after all these years. They leave here with a spectacular deliverance or healing, whatever it is. We're all happy. We're all grateful. Ring, ring, ring. Hi, Brother Mike. Can I come in again? What happened? They went back to their dog vomit, whatever it was. The spirits got back in. If you do that, if you're going to do that, I'd recommend you not start deliverance. Because Matthew 12, Luke 11, you can get sicker if you keep recycling spirits. Because the demons that got thrown out, they're mad. And if they get back in, they say, my God, he's, he may try to get us out again. She may want us to get rid of us again. Let's bring in reinforcements. So your tumor then goes from nothing, from your healing, to, oh, there it is again. It's on the x-ray. Oh, it's bigger. Peter said it. It would have been better... Had they never known, 
than to have known and gone back. So when we do healing and deliverance, in just a couple minutes, you'll be healed and delivered. Do not go back to your old life. Your old life ends here, and it stops. If you're not willing to change or repent, do not come up here. All right, here's our finale. Here you are in your family tree, and you've been listening to this seminar, and you've been saying to yourself, I didn't do any of that stuff, but you know what? My grandma, my great-grandma, somebody in my family tree was involved in some of this spiritual stuff. If that's the case, if you have familiar spirits in your family tree or other powerful demons, they come down the tree, they don't hop trees. They stay in your tree and they go down the tree and you may have been attacked or oppressed or infected by a spirit let in up here even before you were born. The spirits stay in the tree and they go down the tree. So you'll see similar things in the tree, similar patterns of sin in the same tree. Lots of divorces here, lots of cancer here, lots of new age stuff here in that family, lots of sexual abuse in this family, lots of rage, anger, things in this family. You see the spirits come down the family tree, they, their mission is to murder and kill every person in that tree. They're not going to get them all, but... Listen, I take my hat off the demons. Unlike Christians, they care. Unlike Christians, they will fight. Unlike Christians, they know they're in trouble. And they're fighting to survive. Christians walk around with a thumb stuck in their ear and something else stuck up their fanny, moving around to one church service after another. Hallelujah. And they fizzle out later. Ignorance, ignorance in the spirit world will not save you. Ignorance will not save you. If you don't believe me, you look at Christianity in this country, it's pathetic. This country is going to hell in a handbasket. Sin and demons have taken over this country. And it's not the devil's fault, it's the church's fault. The churches are failures. They should have fulfilled the Great Commission this information I shared with you should have been shared in every mega church in this town last Sunday. They don't want to share it because it makes people feel uncomfortable. If they feel uncomfortable, they're afraid they'll go to another church. If they go to another church, then they don't donate to that church. Okay? You have to run your ministry like you don't give a rip. You do the right thing, and whatever else falls in line, that's how it falls. I will stay here and pray my guts up for you, whether you give me a nickel or you give me a thousand dollars. It's immaterial. If you give me a good cussing and run out the dope, bye. I'll just move over to the next person and pray for that one. That don't bother me none. Unlike Christians, demons are focused. They're not scatterbrained. Unlike Christians, demons don't get distracted. They stay on task. They only fear one person. They don't fear anybody else. The Holy Ghost scares the out of them. He knows he has complete command over them. They're, they are petrified when he starts to manifest his presence. When they're manifesting in your body, they're trying to distract you because they're scared. They're petrified that you are going to repent of your sin and make them leave. They're petrified. 
So you'll see people, quote, manifesting, shaking, butterflies, trembling. That's the demon scared because they sense you're taking a step closer to your miracle. They know the Bible better than you'll ever know it. You draw nigh to God. They know Father will draw nigh to them. They're scared, and they start to shake. You have no idea how many people have run out of this building and run to the parking lot. People would bolt out of the house of healing, literally petrified, when the altar call started. And it wasn't them running. It was the demons saying, we got to get that heck out of here. And they run out the door. Demons are not like people. They're not stupid. They're not ignorant. And they care. But if you step out in your faith and you repent of your sin, there's nothing they can do to stop you. They're beaten at Calvary. And you can get rid of them. Demons from you, demons from your family tree, demons from your masonry relatives, demons from your witchcraft neighbor. It don't matter. The Holy Ghost has no problem with demons. The problem is me. It's never with him. Okay, any more questions we close over here? Jehovah's Witness? No. Mormons? There's a Mormon. Or the Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> huh? No. What good is it? He just asked me a question about something about numerology. Uh, if something doesn't seem to make any sense or it's useless, that's got to be familiar spirits. The Holy Ghost is the polar opposite of that kind of thing. If it doesn't do anybody any good, it's probably not from God. Anybody here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't really understand that question, but my my sense is it works bad. You just stay here. <clears throat> Over here. Anybody here? Okay. Turn off them. You turn those lights off for me. Think. Let's pray tonight. Thank you for coming. The bookstore will be open for a little bit longer. Lori will be in there. God bless you. And we're going to... We're going to close in prayer now. We're going to close in prayer. My ministry team is going to get ready. They have badges on tonight. And we're, going to, we're going to pray our guts up for you. Let's close in prayer. Father God, familiar spirits are overrunning America, and they're getting us ready for the rise of the false prophet during the tribulation and the end times. And we're very close to that, I think. But tonight, there's witchcraft and masonry and different things in the family tree of some of your children here tonight who have been plaguing them and their children and their families. And these spirits must be broken off. These curses from these familiar spirits must be broken. Curses of poverty, sickness, mental illness, depression, divorce. All these curses, these spirits brought in have to be broken off tonight. And I know you want to do that because you love and you care. You love and you care. And I'll pray tonight, Lord, for every person that heard the seminar and recognized 
that something's in their family tree or something they did, Ouija board, anything in their past, brought in a spirit into their body or their life or the lives of their children or their relatives. I hope that person will stay here tonight and repent of this wickedness. Witchcraft, there's no greater evil than witchcraft, sorcery, new age. This witch stalking your life. We must repent of it tonight. We must renounce this wickedness. And if we do that, you will deliver and you will heal tonight. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you need prayer, come down to the front so we can pray with you tonight. If you've got some issue, next Friday, uh, Rick will be preaching here tonight. I'll be uh, moving my daughter, coming down, so I won't be here next Friday. Apologize for that. When you come down here, you're going to repent of your sin. Uh, if you come down here, you're not in a casual mood. Uh, you're not in a church mood. This isn't a church. We don't have any church programs here. This is a deliverance center. This is a healing center. You've got to get right with God tonight. You get right with God tonight. You're going to repent of it tonight. You must confess the sins. If it's your parents or grandparents, let's just confess them together. They never confessed them. They may be dead. Right? But to honor the Lord Jesus, we will confess their sins, whatever they were involved in. And you know what they were. Whether it was prostitution, witchcraft, Native American witchcraft, sorcery. You were involved in it, your parents, your grandparents, whatever was in your family tree, we're going to confess it. Most importantly, it's what you were involved in. What you were involved in is the most important one fornication, idolatry, fake religions. You came out of a fake religion. Mormonism, Jehovah's Witness. You picked up familiar spirits from those cults. We're going to confess it. We're going to confess it and repent of it. Every bit of it. Will you do it? Will you do it? You will do it. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray together. And Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. I confess the evil sin of my parents and my grandparents, the wizardry, the warlocks, all of it. I confess it right now. Go ahead. Just confess it, whatever it was. Just say it out loud. The Holy Spirit can hear you. I don't need to hear you. He will hear you. He'll heal you. Heal you. Yes. Come out. Come out of there. Hurry up. Just confess it. Just confess it. Just confess it. Just confess it. I confess the sin of my grandparents, my great-grandparents, whoever it was. I confess the sin of my abuser. I confess it in the name of Jesus. I confess my own sin. I confess my own sin right. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Lord Jesus, forgive me tonight. Oh, God, have mercy upon me. Pray harder. Oh God, have mercy upon me in the name of Jesus. God, have mercy on me in the name of Jesus. Come on now. Just pray harder in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost starting to move. Just step in and repent of it. Just repent of it. God, have mercy on my soul. God, forgive me. Just repent of it. If you're not going to repent of it and you won't confess it, you can't get healed. You're wasting your time down here. You're wasting your time there. This is not a church. It's not a church where you go down and mumble something. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind masonry. I command you to come out right now. I bind witchcraft spirits. I command you, come out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. I bind the general, generational sin of child molesting. Come out. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. I bind you, you familiar spirit of rage and anger. I command you in the name of Jesus. Hinduism, Buddhism, come out. Come out. Come out. Come out.
out, you unclean spirit, you pervert. Come out. Out now in Jesus' name. Bipolar, I bind your power. Put your hand on your head, bipolar. YouTubers, put your hand on your head, your forehead. That bipolar demon's right in your forehead. In the name of Jesus, I bind your power, you lying spirit of my brain, you seducing spirit of my brain. In the name of the Son of the Living God, get out of my head. Now come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. By the authority of the Word of God, get out of my head. Come out of my head. Come out of here, you child molester. You child molester, come out of my body. My uncle, my grandfather, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out, you spirit of perversion. Come out right now. Get out of my body. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come on, ladies. Every ugly man that put a curse on you. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Every ugly man that spoke wickedness over you. That predicted lies. Every drug you ever took. Come out. Say it. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Say it. Every evil spirit of Roman Catholicism, I bind your power right now. Pope demons. Hey, Pope demons, I bind your power. Come out. Mother Mary spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come out of the body right this second. Hurry up. Get out of my body right now. Come out. Come out. Come out, I said. Go. Come out right now. Go. Low self-esteem. Fear of the future. Go. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Come out of that body right now. Get out, I said. Come out. Come out. Every ugly man. Adultery. Fornication. Come out. Go. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go now. Heal. What's wrong with him? Rage and anger. Come out. Come out. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Satan, I bind your power. Come out. Come on, ladies. Anxiety and worry causes you to use food as a comfort. Put your hands on your stomach quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. You one clean spirit. You're trying to give me morbid obesity, heart disease, high blood pressure. You're trying to kill me. I command you by the authority of the word of God. I command you unclean spirit of food. I command you to come out of my stomach and my intestines. Come out right now. Go now. Go now. Come out now. Food demon, come out right now. Go, come out. There he is. There he goes. Come out. Come out. Using food as a comfort instead of the Holy Ghost. I repent of it. Come out of me. Come out right now. Come there he is. Come out. Here he comes. That's him right there. Come out. Kundalini spirits. Come out right now. You went through a fire tunnel, a prayer tunnel. You picked up a transfer. Come out in Jesus' name. Church demons, come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Come out. Unclean spirit of food. Come out right now. Come out, I said. Hurry up. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Lord, I repent of it. Overeating. I repent of it. Bitterness. Anger. Rage. Get out of my body right now. Come out. Come out. You get that thing out of there. Hurry up. Don't look over there. Come out right now. Satan, I command you to loose your hold. Say that. Say that. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I bind that bipolar spirit in my brain right now. Say it. Say it. I can't hear you. Say what? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Spirit of bipolar, I bind your power. Get out of my head. Right now. Now. Lord, help him pray. Help him. Help him fight for his life. Come on, DJ. Let's go. You got to fight for your life. Demons are fighting to stay in your body. 
They do not want to lose you. You cannot get them out unless you fight back. You cannot get them out if you don't fight back. Fight. Fight harder. Fight harder. What you need, honey? I command you to come out of my body right now. I command you to come out now. Go. Come out right now. Say that. I command you to come out and stop hiding. Spirit, I command you to come out of my body right now. Stop hiding in my body. Come out of my leg, I said. Get out of my leg right now. Food demon, come out. Come out right now. Come out of there. Obesity, come out right now. Using food as a comfort instead of the Holy Ghost. I repent of it. I repent of using food as a comfort. Come out in Jesus' name. Lo, come out of there right now. Satan, loose your hold. You cannot casually approach the devil. He didn't casually approach you. He's trashing you. He's trashing your family. You're going to stand there and do nothing? And he's trashing you? you got to be kidding me. Is that what you do? Would, would, would you do that if somebody broke into your house? Just sit there and watch them take the TV, take the jewelry, take all your money and walk out the door and wave goodbye to them? Yeah, come back and rob me anytime you feel like it. Are you going to stand there and do nothing? Are you kidding? you got to be kidding me. This can't be real. Stop praying. Stop praying. You already prayed. Talk right to the demon in your body. Speak right to him. Just do what I tell you. I know my business. Just do what I tell you. Talk right to the spirit. Talk right to the spirit. Talk right to the spirit. I command you. I charge you, Jesus said. I charge you. I charge you. Are you going to stand there and let the devil ruin the rest of your life? Are you kidding me? Is that for real? you got to be kidding. You came here tonight to stand there and do nothing? I don't believe it. I'm sorry, but I don't believe that. Come on. Luke chapter 10. Behold, I give you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Matthew 18. Whatever you bind on this earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on this earth. Keep yawning. Take another one. Big yawn. Come on. What's in there? What's in there? You know her? What's wrong with her? Well, she came last last week. What's left? She had anxiety. I don't know. I don't know if I. I don't know if I. Is the anxiety gone? I, I guess I'm not positive. So I. What do you mean? You know what anxiety is? Yeah. Do you have it? <laughs> She's still afraid of it, even though she You're doesn't feel it. She doesn't feel it anymore. I guess I'm afraid that an anxiety attack will happen, even though uh, I went yeah. through that. You, you have, it's not anxiety that's your problem. It's unbelief. Close your eyes. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, for not believing your word. Forgive me for not believing you'll take care of me. Forgive me. You, I don't believe you're going to protect me. I don't believe in you and I'm sorry for that. And I repent of it right now and I command the spirit of unbelief to come out of my body right this second. Come out now. I do not have an anxiety disorder. That demon left last Friday. Come out. I repent of unbelief and doubt. I repent of it. Come on. Tell him you're sorry. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. It's easy to repent if your heart's into it. It's easy to do. Father, I'm so sorry. That's so easy to pray when you're really sorry. If you're not sorry, you're just going through the motions and you got to go home sick. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Repent of it. Get out of there, buddy. Hurry up. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Come out right now. Come out right now. 
Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. Are you sorry? Or are you just saying that? The Holy Ghost knows if you're just saying that, and so do the demons. Come on, repent of it. Go. Demons know people who believe and those who don't. They know them. They know if you do not believe. They know that. You got to convince them you believe. You got to convince them you believe. Get out of my body right now. Come out of there. Get out of my head. Come out right now, I said. Come out, you deceiving spirit. Come out. <laughs> Roman Catholicism, I bind your power. Come out. Get out of my body right now. Go. Pornography, drugs, chronic masturbation. Get out of this body. Come out of his feet. Go. Go now. Go. You get out of my head right now. You rotten deep. Come out right now. Go. Just go. Get out of my body right now, you pervert. Come out of there, you pervert. Come out in Jesus' name. Get out of my body right now. Come out. Of Come out right now. Quicker. Come out quicker. Faster. Come out now. Go. If you're not going to fight, you're not going to get nothing. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. If you don't care, the demons know you don't care. If you're questioning whether or not you have spirits and you're not sure of it, the demons will take advantage of that doubt and they'll go dormant and they won't come out. They won't come out. Just repent of it. Take command. Everyone every ugly man come out every disappointment at church every church person that betrayed me I forgive every one of them I forgive them and I want them out now go now go now in Jesus mighty name go now come out of there Every familiar spirit, you snake, come out of my body right now. Every snake in this room, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Every snake, every transfer spirit from a demon-possessed man, get out of that body right now. Come out. Every constant sinning, constant failure, constant compromising my faith, go. Come out. Constantly compromising my faith. I repent of it now. I'm going all in. Satan, I command you in the name of the Lord. You don't pray when you're doing deliverance. There's no praying going on. You take command. You take command. You take command and force them out. You force them out with your faith. You force them out with your anointing. Just repent of it. Come on. Father all the women come on guys the devil sent you a woman and she was a plant she was a plant designed to take your time and your money and then run off with your kids and stab you in the back come on guys come on now the sex was good but you paid a heavy price for good sex you paid a bad price for it Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Every woman you ever slept with. Come on, guys. Every woman. Lesbians. Come on. Homosexuality. Come on. Generational spirit of lust. I bind your power. Lesbian. Homosexual. Lust. Wickedness. Child abuse. Come out. Come out. Generational homosexuality, sexual perversion, transgender spirits, I bind your power. A fake man, a fake woman, come out! Go in Jesus' mighty name. Transgender spirits, come out of that body! Get out of there! Come out, you pervert! Come out in the name of Jesus Christ! Come out! You are not gay. 
You think he's fair? Come out of there! Gay demons, come out! Homosexual, come out of that body! Sexual perversion, go! In Jesus' name. Every child molester they ever laid a hand on you. Come on, ladies. Yeah, you got fondled. Yes, your brother, your stepbrother. Yeah, somebody got to you when you were young. It happened to you too, some of you guys. It happened to you too. Yeah, a cousin, uncle, somebody, stepdad, somebody who fondled you. Come on now. Let's get that ugly spirit out. Let's get that ugly spirit out in Jesus' mighty name. Come on now. Come on now. Every spirit of perversion attacked me when I was a child. I was an innocent victim. I was a child. I had no sin. But the devil sent me a plant, a bad man, a bad woman, a bad husband, a bad wife. That was a satanic plant designed to destroy your life and strip you of every nickel you got, strip you of every ounce of self-esteem you got. You're going to cast that person out tonight and break that soul tie and that curse from the bowels of hell. Come out now. Come out now. Come out. Unclean spirits. Not that lady. You unclean spirit, come out now. That's how you talk to the devil. You're not negotiating a real estate deal. What are you, nuts? This is your life. You got to fight for your life. This isn't a car purchase. You got to fight for your life. Fool. Come on. You think you can sin like the gates of hell and then casually walk off and have nothing happen to you? Are you kidding me? You actually believe that delusion? You think you can live like the devil and then walk away like nothing happened and you're not sick? You're not infected with spirits? You're not mentally, emotionally ill? You really think you can get away with that? You must be crazy. You are crazy. It's demonic crazy. Thus saith the Lord, the sacrifices of God are a broken heart. And he saves those who have a contrite spirit. Come on now. Just break your heart before the Lord. The Holy Ghost will come right to you. He'll run right over to you. I've seen it a thousand times. As soon as somebody has a broken heart, the Spirit of the Lord moves right over and gets them. I mean, it's almost that fast. It's amazing. But if you got vanity and pride and arrogance, I've seen him walk past that person a thousand times. Pride and vanity and arrogance will quench the moving of the Spirit every single time. Just repent of it. Father God, I am a broken person tonight. I tried to do it my way, and I failed. I tried to think it through using my intelligence. I failed. I tried to fix my life, and it not only didn't get fixed, it got worse. My life's worse than it was a year ago. It's worse than it was a year ago. And I did it, Lord. And I just realized tonight, I am like Satan. That's what he said. I will ascend to the heights. I will be like the Most High. I will walk through the Garden of Eden. I will. I, I, I. You tried I, I, I. And you failed. You failed. Now it's time for the Holy Ghost to take your life. And the Word of God take your life. Just repent of being like the devil. That's easy to do. Father, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Lord. God, have mercy on me. God, have mercy on my soul. Come on, just cry out to him. 
Come on, raise your hands. Dear Jesus, help me. Dear Jesus, help me. Oh, my God, help me. My God, help me. Come on now. Come on, pray for your guts. Casual prayers don't work. Casual prayers don't work. Dinner, dinner prayers don't work. Uh, dear Jesus, bless my food. Amen. Those kind of prayers don't work here. You got to pray from your guts. <laughs> if you stand up here and do nothing, nothing's going to happen. If you go home and do nothing and go back into your sin, nothing's going to happen. You're going to stay sick the rest of your stinking life. God is calling you to higher ground. He's calling you now. Answer the call. Answer the call. Come on. Answer the call. Jesus, help me. If you have a high IQ, you're in deep trouble. People that are intelligent have terrible, terrible time moving in the spirit. They think too much. They think too much. If you think too much, it quenches the spirit. You need childlike faith. You need to open your heart. You need to get your tears back. Where are your tears? Where are your tears? Where's your soul? Come on. You got to repent of this thing now. Hear the word of the Lord. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. The Holy Ghost is running wild here tonight. The Holy Ghost is on one of his miniature rampages. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Right now he can be found. Demons are flying out of people at the altar. The Holy Ghost is reaching out with his mighty power. If you stand there and do nothing, he will just simply pass you by like he did the last 50 times you were at church. The last 50 times you came down to pray, he passed you. Why? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man forsake his thoughts and let them return unto the Lord and he will have mercy and to our God and he will have abundant pardon. He will abundantly pardon you if you repent of your sin. Just repent of it. Lord, I surrender. I've had enough. I can't take it anymore. My life sucks and I'm done with it. Listen, what do you got to lose by ending your life tonight? Just end your life and turn it over to the Lord. What do you really got to lose? What do you got? Stardom and fame? Are you kidding me? Nobody even likes you. You got about three people that can stand you. Sacrificing your life tonight, you will be leaving nothing. Fall on your knees. Father God. Oh God. Save my soul, Lord. Save my soul. I don't want my life anymore. I want a new life in Christ. I'm done with it. What do you got to lose? What are you, a billionaire? What? You're broke. You ain't got any money. You're broke. You live from check to check. Come on, let the Holy Ghost have your finances. Come on, turn them over to him. He's super rich. He's super rich. What do you got to lose? Your life? You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Losing your life? That's nothing. Turn it over to the Lord. He's got a miraculous life staring at you. You should be healing the sick. You should be up here casting demons out of people. What's wrong with you? You should be doing this. These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You should be doing this. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? 
Get out of the body and spirit of infirmity. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Infirmity. Come out. Heal. 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 Come out. Satan, loose your hold. Satan, loose your hold. Don't pray about it. Tell him. You tell him to do it. I told you to come out now. Fear and terror, I bind your power. Come out of the woman of God. Come out of her. Come out of the woman of God. Sorrow and misery. Regrets. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. I repent of it. My regrets. My sorrows. My anger to my dad. My mom. Come on, get your parents out of there. <clears throat> you don't need your parents anymore. You got a heavenly father. You have a heavenly father. You don't need your mom and dad anymore. Let them go. Release your parents right now. Go. I let my mom and dad go now in Jesus' mighty name. Go. Leave my soul now. Leave my soul now. My dad, my mom, they were very flawed people. They were alcoholics. They were verbally abusive. They cursed and swore. Just release them right this second. Father God, I release my dad and my mom into your hands. I let them out of my soul. I turn them over to you. I place them in your loving hands. And I release their spirits from my body. I release my mother and my dad's spirits from my body. Right this second. Go. Get out of that body. Satan, you pervert. I command you to come out of her womb now. Come out of that womb right this second. Come out of her genitals right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come out of her body. Spirit of infirmity. Go. There he is. Here he comes. Go. Come out. Come out. I repent of self hatred. I repent of hating others. I repent of wounds. Come out right now. Spirit of infirmity, leave my body. And I command you to go. There he is. Here he comes. There he comes. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out. Hold that. Come out right now. Come out. Come on. Let's repent together. I repent of my regrets over my miserable life, my failures, my losses. The demons keep rehearsing them in my mind over and over. I'll repent of it right this second. Every regret, every sorrow, every miserable relationship, every rotten wife or husband I ever lived with, I repent of regretting. I repent of regrets, and I start my life anew tonight. Come out right there. Come out right there. Go. Come out of her right this second. Marius, come out. Come out, sorrow and misery. Go. Go now. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Sadness and misery and regrets and bad men. Come out. Food demons. Go. Food spirit. Food spirits. Demons will try to get you to overeat because they want you to have heart disease, a heart attack. They want you to have high blood pressure. They want you to die early and die young. Well, that's not going to happen. Go. 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 I repent of overeating. I repent of being addicted to sugar. I repent of eating garbage all the time. I command you, Satan, loose my body right now. Hurry up. Loose my body right now. Get out of there. Come out. Come out right now. Spirit of infirmity, I hate your guts. Come out of my legs. Come out of my hip. Come out of my feet. Shake your feet. Shake your legs. Go. <clears throat> Satan, I command you right now, come out of my wife. Come out of my son. Come out of my daughter. Hurry up. Be quick about it. Get out of my feet. Unbelief and doubt. 
Unbelief and doubt, I command you to leave me. Go! Kundalini, come out. There he is. Kundalini, go. Church demons, go. Prayer tunnels, go. Come out. Demon angel feathers, come out. Demon gold dust, come out. Right now. I want you out now. Go. Unbelief and doubt, go. The cares of this life, go. I must fulfill my destiny. I'm supposed to be a faith healer, healing the sick. That's my call from God. I don't have any other call. Get out of my body right now. Hurry up. Get out. Come out of my body. Say it. Get out of, say it. Come out of my body. Atta girl. Say it. Come out now. Come out now. Go. Virgin Mary demons, I bind your power. Come out right now. Virgin Mary. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed. YouTubers, listen to me carefully. If you have any negative emotions or thoughts about another person in your past, Jesus called that ought. If you have ought in your soul, negative emotions about somebody because of what they've done to you in the past, that will block your healing and your deliverance. So if you got molested as a kid and you still have bad feelings about that person, that is going to block your deliverance. That will block your deal. It's called ought. It's called ought. It's very dangerous. You can forgive the person and still have ought. Ought is different from forgiveness. You have to repent of unforgiveness and ought. Ought is different from forgiving them. The devil tricks everybody. He always tells them, hey, you already forgave them. You didn't forgive them. You still have ought. Now just repent of a Father, in the name of Jesus, I release these horrible bad feelings I have for my ex. My kids betrayed me. My parents stabbed me in the back. My relatives molested me. Somebody beat me half to death. And to this day, I got bad feelings about that person. And I'm going to repent of it right now. Ought, I command you in the name of Jesus. I bless that person. I forgive them. I give them over to God's grace. And I command this ought to leave my body and my soul right this second. Ought, you come out now. Ought, you come out now. The devil tricks people. He tells them, hey, what happened to you in your past matters. That's very important information. It is not. You were molested, cheated, lied to, beaten, betrayed. That is no longer important information. Here's the real information. You are washed in the blood that Jesus shed. You have been forgiven and chosen by God for eternity in heaven. You are no longer going to die and go to hell and face judgment. You have been forgiven in Jesus' holy name. That is what matters, not what happened to you in your past. That no longer matters. Now, just go ahead and repent of it. You've got to repent of your regrets. you got regrets. Those things got to go. Regrets have to go. Because if you don't get rid of your regrets, the Holy Spirit can't start you on your new life. Because you can't go forward in the spirit carrying regrets from the past. That will not work. You have to let it go. Turn it over to the Lord and release it from your soul. And God will heal you. Thursday night, same thing again. Preaching, teaching, healing and deliverance at 7 p.m. Pacific time on livestream.com slash H-O-H-A-Z. I I will not be here next Friday. Rick will be here killing it. 7 o'clock on our YouTube channel. I'll be back the next Friday with a Bible study on the Queen, the Queen of Palestine. In two weeks, go to the website after you leave this service and hit the post deliverance button at the top of the website and go through that 12-step program. If you don't, you run the risk of losing your healing or getting reinfected with the demons that already came out. You do not want them to get back in. 
Okay, you hit the post deliverance button at the top. Then you hit the teaching button at the top. And you read. I'll see you in two Fridays. See you next time.